In this section, we'll take a very short tour of system inertia around the world and looking at some jurisdictions and the relationship between inertia and system size, as well as looking more closely at my home state, Western Australia, and the power system there, the Southwest Interconnected System, and looking, drilling down deeper into what makes for low inertia conditions. Total system inertia is largely a function of system size, so generation capacity and total demand at any point in time. The graph here shows the inertia estimates for medium to large scale systems around the world. So on the small end of the scale, so less than say 50 gigawatt seconds, we have these systems. So the two New Zealand systems, um, North and South Island, which are interconnected by HVDC interconnector, um, the West Australian system, and Ireland. So these are all just small island systems. And as you get bigger towards the Hydro-Quebec system in Canada, um, the other Australian system on the eastern coast of Australia, uh, the Nordic, Great Britain, and ERCOT systems in Texas, and they, they get progressively larger. So off the scale is the Western interconnection, um, in the US and the Eastern Interconnection, and they're, they're quite a lot larger. So here we see they're 500 to 1,000 and 1,500 to 2,800 gigawatt seconds. This slide shows system inertia versus load in North America. So we have the Western Interconnection, the Eastern Interconnection, Texas and Hydro Quebec. And you can see very clearly that there is a strong positive correlation between load and inertia. So as load goes up, inertia goes up, which kind of makes sense because you have more generators on when you have more load. So probably more of interest though is that some of these correlations are actually non-linear and they flatten out at low loads. So what it's suggesting is that there is just minimum amount of generation or synchronous generation that is being connected to the system despite the load. So this is probably due to large thermal facilities like coal and nuclear that they can't turn off or they don't want to turn off because it becomes expensive. And so this sort of sets sort of natural inertia flaws for some of these systems. But having said that, it doesn't appear to occur in all systems. So some of them are a lot more linear looking. So as a play study, I wanted to drill down into one of these low inertia power systems, in this case, the Southwest Interconnected System in Western Australia and describe the evolution of this system and how it's slowly becoming even lower inertia. So the Swiss is a islanded power system and it serves the southwest of Western Australia. And it's distinct and disconnected from the eastern state system, the NEM. The Swiss has an average demand of 2.4 gigawatts and a highest ever peak demand of just 4.3 gigawatts in 2016. We haven't reached that yet, but we were close a few times. However, it covers a huge geographic area of 261,000 square kilometres, which is greater than the landmass of the UK. So you can see it's 700 kilometres north, south, 700 kilometres east, west. And while it's bigger than the UK geographically, the UK's uh, national grid power system has something like 50, 60 gigawatts of load. So it's significantly larger. Now in recent years, there's been a real growing share of non-synchronous generation in the Swiss. It's primarily from rooftop PV and large scale wind and solar farms. And we have recently hit an instantaneous renewable penetration of 61.5% in October. We tracked a large synchronous generator inertia in the Swiss and notice that it's been slowly trending downwards in recent years. And that's primarily due to the growth in rooftop PV, as well as new utility scale PV and wind farms that are being connected. So more than 550 megas of capacity has been added in this year alone. And here we have the some histograms from different years of generator inertia. And what you can see is that it usually tends to be in the range of 12,000 to 17,000 megawatt seconds. And probably can't see it here, but in blue, the blue curve is more shifted to the right, 
which means we used to have more um, inertia back in 2017. And as the years have passed, 2018, 2019, 20, we're sort of seeing a slight shift to the left, so at lower inertia. But this is a more like a time series of the generator inertia over the years. And it's probably not that obvious, but there is a slight downward trend. So the lows are getting a bit lower and the highs are less high than they used to be. So we've reached some minimum inertias last year of sort of 8.8 .8 gigawatt seconds. So what makes for a typical low inertia day in the Swiss? So here I've put together some characteristics of a typical low inertia day as we see it. So low inertia is really correlated with low loads. And what we find as the low loads is the weekends, where we have the reduced commercial and industrial activity. And secondly, during the shoulder periods, for us it's September to November, which is the, the spring shoulders period. And that's really the traditional period for plan major outages on the large thermal plants. And at the same time, the position of the sun, the solar declination angle, is, is shifting from um, the winter equinox to the, the summer equinox. So we're seeing increased levels of rooftop PV. And with these all these major outages, we see lower inertia as these thermal plants are decommitted. And with rooftop PV outputs being high, we see that they eat into the operational demand of the system. Also around this time, you have very mild temperatures. So 18 to 25 degrees Celsius is very comfortable. And Generally speaking, you don't need so much heating or cooling um, in the residential loads. And while also be quite cool for efficient PV performance on your rooftop PV. And on your low inertia days, you always have clear skies, so you have the maximum rooftop PV output. And finally, because of the low loads, there are low market prices. And that is then also incentivizing large stable plant to decommit. Um, to prevent market prices from going too low. And so therefore we are seeing then a reduction, a withdrawal of inertia during these decommitment um, times. And so here's a picture of uh, the lowest operational demand that's been recorded in, in Western Australia. And you can see that it was a daytime and it happened at 12.30, so just peak sun. And we, we put a, an estimate of how much PV output there was. So here, here was the actual underlying load, but the PV, rooftop PV basically ate up a lot of that uh, load. You see a massive duck curve effect here. 